Hey everyone, it's Justin again. So, we know what systems of equations are, but how are they useful? Well, in this lesson, we're gonna learn how systems can be used in real world scenarios. Make sure to take notes, you're gonna need them for the next video. In all the examples that you're about to see, you'll notice that each word problem gives enough information to set up multiple equations. This is the key to recognizing that a system is involved. When trying to solve a word problem involving a system, it's helpful to have a plan. First, define what the variables are. What don't you know yet that might be important? Next, set up the equations and make sure the equations make sense. Then solve using any of the methods you'll learn in this unit. Finally, make sure that your solution answers the question that was asked. Sometimes finding the solution isn't the end, so double check before moving on. In this video, we're gonna focus only on the first two steps and then we'll complete the process in the next video. So let's start with an easy one. Data plan A charges a flat fee of $20 and then $1 per gigabyte. Data plan B charges a flat fee of $10 and then $3 per gigabyte. First, we wanna define the variables. What don't we know yet? Well, with both plans, how much will it cost? and how many gigs you use are the unknown. So now let's set up the equations. First, we're told that data plan A costs a flat fee of $20 plus $1 per gigabyte. So we've got an amount that you pay no matter what and an amount that gets added repeatedly. That sounds like a slope intercept form to me. The cost equals $20 flat plus $1 times the number of gigs you used. Now for data plan B, a flat fee of $10 plus $3 per gig. That will also be a slope intercept form. So now that we've got two equations, one for each data plan, but they use the same variables with the same meaning, we'll wait to solve this until the next video, but see if you can solve it now by graphing. All right, next up. Mario biked and ran for his morning workout. The total combined distance is 18 miles. The distance he biked was two miles more than three times his running distance. Here, we know Mario's total distance, and we have a relationship between the distance he biked and the distance he ran. So what don't we know? Well, obviously we don't know how far each distance was yet. He might have biked nine miles and ran nine miles, or maybe he biked six miles and ran 12, or maybe he biked 17 miles and only ran one mile. So since we don't know the exact distances yet, we'll use variables in their places. For the second equation in our system, we can just convert that last sentence into a mathematical equation. The distance he biked was two miles more than three times his running distance. Again, we'll wait to actually solve this until the next video, but see if you can solve it by graphing on your own. Next one. Scott is running a candy shop and is selling Hershey's and Snacker Bars. He's selling the Hershey's Bars for $2 and the Snacker Bars for three and wants to make $80 profit for the day. He has 30 candy bars to sell. Okay, the first thing we need to do is identify the unknown amounts, the variables. We know the cost of each candy bar. We know how much money Scott wants to make and we know how many candy bars there are. So what information is missing? While we know the total amount of candy bars, we don't know how many of each there are, which will be important since they cost different amounts. So that's the information we're missing. How many Hershes and how many Snacker bars Scott has to sell? Now that we know our variable, we can set up the equations. We'll start with the easy one. If he has 30 candy bars total, then that's the total amount of Hershes and the amount of Snackers put together. The second equation will be a little more difficult. Scott wants to make $80 selling these candy bars. That $80 will be made up of $2 for every Hershey's bar he sells and $3 for every Snacker bar. If Scott sells one of each, he'll make $5. If he sells two of each, then he'll get $4 from Hershey's and $6 from Snacker for a total of $10. But remember, the two variables have to add to make 30 which is what makes this more like a puzzle. We need to find the amount of the two candy bars that satisfy all parts of this scenario. 
not just one or the other. Setting up systems is just like setting up individual equations. There's just more than one each time. In the next video, we'll be solving the systems that we've already set up in this video. You already know the easiest method for solving systems, graphing. So I encourage you to try solving these on your own and then use the next video to check your answers and see how you did. See you next time.